All right, hello everyone, and welcome to the second session of Tokyo Red. Uh, for those of you that this is your first time tun tuning in, uh, Tokyo Red is what I hope to be a continuing uh, weekly cyberpunk red campaign that is something we will be doing moving forward. And yes, before you ask, um, Cyberpunk Red is set in the same setting and universe as the anticipated Cyberpunk 2077 video game. Side note here, I'm noticing that OBS is throwing a fit about my microphone, so if it's too loud, please let me know. Um, what was I saying? So Cyberpunk Red is set in the same setting and universe as the anticipated Cyberpunk 2077 video game. Chronologically, Red is set between the old 2020 setting and the, um, obviously the new video game 2077. Uh, Tokyo Red specifically is set in 2050, and if you didn't already guess, it's set in Tokyo. Uh, we've already had the one successful session where we've covered the Just Like Real mission found in the Jumpstart Kit for Cyberpunk Red. Uh, today's session will be something different, as in it isn't coming from the Jumpstart Kit. Uh, it is my hope that it will be just as fun. Um, before we get to that, though, I do have to say something that's not exactly as fun. Um, as of a few days ago, um, due to a messy termination at my previous job, um, streaming and Patreon is pretty much my primary, primary source of income now. So that means whatever support you can provide, whether that's a follow, a patron, a subscription, a donation, whatever, goes a long way and I deeply appreciate it. But of course, please take care of yourselves before you give anything to me. I would rather you do that. Don't worry too much about me. Now, with that shilling out of the way, we can get to the good stuff. Uh, we have a little bit of a tradition in this particular group in that we start each session with some form of current event monologue that ties into the overall session in some way. Uh, for Cyberpunk Red, uh, that means reading off of a scream sheet. Now, scream sheets are essentially slick, flimsy newspapers that are high-speed printed from data terms across the city. These are part in-world news articles and part adventure seed. It'll make more sense once you see one. So without any further ado, I'm going to switch this over to that screen and McCall will be doing the reading today. Japan Today. Kawaii culture needs to stop. By Soda Nezako, concerned citizen from Akihabara, one hour ago. I was enjoying a nice cup of coffee at my favorite cafe when two body cons walked by. To no one's surprise, these girls were hardly dressed, showing more skin and chrome than their literal lingerie could cover. And if that wasn't bad enough, they were talking in this ear-grating, high-pitched squeak and comparing their bunny ears to one another. Is this what today's youth has been reduced to? What happened to our community's morals? Why is this sort of thing championed by the media instead of shouted down and shamed like it was in the days of my youth? It may be a stereotype that we proud citizens of Japan do not like the squeaky wheel, I'll admit. But it is a stereotype for a good reason. By conforming and following to community morals, we show a better face to foreigners and the world at large. Do we really want these body cons to be what we're known for? It makes me sick to my stomach. Kira Atse Concert! Anyone who's anyone knows that tonight Circus Tokyo is playing host to Kirei Asa. Kirei-chan is on her final tour of her idol career with only two more showings after tonight's concert. This is a must-see event, if not live then via brain dance. Unfortunately for you, if this is the first time you're hearing of it, you're probably not getting in the doors. Tickets sold out months ago and rumor has it Circus Tokyo is going to be going the extra mile to verify that only those on the list will get in. And <clears throat> Orbital positions now available. Applications for positions on Kendachi's orbital factories are now open to the public. Kendachi is the premier manufacturer of orbital crystals, optical chips, and monomolecular products. Our monoblade can be found in every single factory with industrial equipment in mainland Japan. By joining our team, you join over 9,000 skilled workers committed to continuing Kendachi's global presence and pristine image. Our pay is extremely competitive, and our benefits package is second to none. 
there is a reason we have been listed among the top ranks of Japan's best companies to work for for decade after decade. Those who wish to apply may do so by visiting one of our branch offices or the main headquarters in Shioku, Tokyo. You will be required to undergo a thorough, back ah, a thorough background check as well as comprehensive medical screening to ensure that you are meeting our high standards for employment. Very good. And it might help if I was speaking with my microphone turned on. I, again, OBS is freaking out about my microphone. I'm not exactly why it's doing that. There's nothing new. So again, uh, anyone who's watching, if it's too loud or I'm blowing out the microphone, uh, please let me know. I will do my best to adjust it. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and jump into the opening monologue. So it's a busy night in Shibuya, uh, more so than usual. The crowds on the street are full of life and excitement, despite having to take shelter beneath umbrellas from the heavy downpour. Uh, their enthusiasm mostly comes from the fact, as you just heard, that Kuriasa, an extremely popular idol, is playing tonight at Circus Tokyo. Now, Circus Tokyo used to be this small, almost like hole-in-a-wall club, but over the years, it has expanded and become one of the clubs, not only in Shibuya, but in the greater Tokyo, Tokyo area. Anyone who's anyone is going to be at this concert. Everyone else is going to have to catch it on Braindance. Well, except you all, my players. So, Chono, about three hours ago, you received a call from The Family. They told you to take your closest colleagues and go see Mr. Kitamara. Kitamara is a quote-unquote friend of the family. He is running security tonight for the Curry chan concert, and apparently he has a job that needs to be handled discreetly. Your conversation didn't really go into depth what that meant or what your payment would be, but you can always find that out from Kitamara later. First, however... You have to figure out how to get past the massive, multiple block spanning line of people waiting to get in to Circus Tokyo. You have seen multiple, uh, sorry, you have seen multiple VIPs cut the line and walk right in, but only after the four rather well dressed and beefy looking bouncers have checked their names against a paper list. You've also noticed that there appears to be a weapon scanner to the coat room just inside the door, which is a problem if any of you are carrying at the moment. Uh, so, put you guys on this map. So, uh, it is important, uh, before we get into uh, any other sort of questions, uh, we do have Jester joining us this week. Uh, he's one of our regulars. He was just out last week because of... Uh, Vacation and family stuff. So this is uh, Jester. This is your opportunity to introduce your character. Uh, tell us a little bit about them and uh, anything we should know. All right. So I don't know if you guys have met Enzo yet. If we're gonna retcon meeting them, or if it's just meeting you. But uh, tall, uh, African American descent individual. Because that's the art that struck me. Big, beefy, um, all looks like all muscular in a impeccably tailored suit not the not going with the usual cyberpunk leathers and chain bikes it is just like you know the very very nice suit you know two or three buttons doesn't matter um underneath it though you can definitely see some kind of uh body armor and he always seems to be carrying a briefcase of some kind for some usually um yeah. Sunglasses on, dark sunglasses, because of course it's still cyberpunk and those are standard issue. But when he does take them off, there is a artificial eye in there as well. Yes. And as uh, McCall is saying, it is a very dapper group. He fits the tone as he walks up. No tie, collared shirt, very professional. Hello. <laughs> Greetings today. I nod silently. I'm Enzo. Yes. We, I saw you unload your crates into your apartment. Welcome, neighbor. Welcome. Friend of a friend says you have work. Always willing to do what needs to be done to earn a living. I just nod towards uh, Chono then shrug. He's the boss. Well, landlord. Same thing, really. Jono. 
So we're going to this concert and doing a job for, well, that's all you guys need to know is the family. <clears throat> the problem is, is we need to find a way of getting in. Security on the outside, paper list, old school, no electronics to hack, um, armed, probably weapon scanners, and yeah. So, so weapon scanners pick up just firearms or any, like they train to scan any kind of weapon? Um, that is something that, unless I've missed it completely, is left rather vague. Um, my guess, and this is again a guess, um, is that it would pick up anything larger than a kitchen knife. So if you are carrying um, some form of larger blade, or if you are literally packing, um, it would likely be picked up by the weapon scanner. But that actually is a good chance to discuss uh, what everyone is carrying, if anything at all. Um, it is a point of order that there has been some time passed between uh, the Just Like Real mission that we did a week ago and this week. So there is the opportunity for you to have possibly acquired equipment. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to start at the top, work our way down in Discord. Uh, Chono, what do you have with you weapon-wise, if anything? Um, probably just a heavy pistol. Okay. Concealed, um, I would there, hope. Would there have been any way of getting Lance to let me have a license? Ah, uh, you know, let's make a roll of it. Uh, let's see. Do you have persuasion as a skill? Yes, I do. I would like you to roll me a persuasion, please. Uh, the DV on this, before you roll, will be a 22. Uh, now remember, you can spend luck to supplement your roll here. Um, would have been good to... Uh, anyways. Uh, yeah, I'll spend two points of luck. Okay. And as a reminder, at the start of every session, uh, your luck does refill, and so does your HP and everything else. So if you haven't done that already, now would be a good time. A 20. Um, and that's uh, plus two, so... Well, the good news is that that's an actual 10 on your D10, and the way the system works is if you do that, you get to roll another D10. It basically explodes. So go ahead and roll me another D10. A 7. A 27. Not only, Chono, have you gotten a license for your pistol, and the way the license is explicitly written is that you are a freelance bodyguard, quote-unquote. Um, but it also contains a, shall we say, a note of reference on file where it's not just, hey, I've picked up a license. It doesn't mean anything. You actually have a recommendation from your uh, friend, as we'll call her, Officer Lance, um, that says that as long as you're not, you know, murdering people in the streets, that you probably have a very good reason uh, to use your pistol. And that probably goes without saying, but... Um, she's putting a lot of trust in you for this. All right. Um, do I think it'll let me get through the door with it? Um, that you're not sure. Um, it, like, if you were stopped by a, a member of the Metropolitan Police, you could show them the license, and then they would be like, okay, you're clear to go. But whether or not that would get you through this specific weapon detector, you don't know. Okay. All right, so that's Chono. Uh, up next, we have Enzo. Enzo, I think you said that you had a briefcase. Yeah, it's um, I just going with what the the pregen had equipment wise, mm -hmm. and he had an assault rifle, which seemed ridiculous to justify. But I'm figuring it's uh, a briefcase that has like you kind of like pull the the, the 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 handle off of it, and it unfolds into uh, an assault rifle of some. Kind, okay. Which okay. almost certainly not get through the weapon scanner. Yeah, probably not. Okay. And then, uh, Akari, what do you have going on? Um, given that we are in a horrendously crowded situ uh, situation, going to see some shifty people that uh, Chono has at least vouched for, I am currently just have a... I have a short blade, so the size of whatever the regulation legal size is, 
in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. And other than that, it's just me and my fist. Noted. And then, uh, Xavier, what do you got going on? Uh, I'm just going to stick with my Fig Knuckles. Okay. All right. So, with uh, notes being made to that effect, again, the question becomes, how do you get inside? Anybody have any ideas? Well, with it being... Uh... Pencil and paper, it's a little hard to hack. Um, how close is this um, area? Or is the, uh, what was it? The Tokyo Circus? Yeah, uh, the Circus Tokyo. Circus Tokyo. How close is that to our area of, or our home? Uh, so if you are in, I haven't really settled completely where your apartment is, but I imagine it would be in northern Shibuya. And unless okay. I'm misremembering the map, the Circus Tokyo is the southeast of Shibuya. Okay. So still a fairly large area. Yeah, I mean, okay. it probably would have taken you guys maybe about 20, 30 minutes to walk here from the apartment. Mm -hmm. um, definitely would not have been able to drive here because at this late of hour, especially with the rain, um, traffic is pretty much at a standstill right now. Okay. Um... Could I uh, could I use a local expert or something to call up one of the folks that I've done one of my don't ask don't tell repair jobs for for exchange of favor for another job? Sure, oh. I'm curious to see where this will go. Uh, go ahead and roll your local knowledge for me. Okay. A twenty-four, Ooh, that's an explosion. and it does explode. Oh, sorry, I just had to roll another d10, so that would be a... Uh, uh, 29 total. Yeah. All right, so um, tell me a little bit about this contact of yours since you rolled so well. Uh, why are they so enamored with you? Um, okay, so because I have done lots of work for local individuals um, uh, while maintaining a reputation for providing good work and not snitching, um, I have developed a series of, let's say, professional relationships where I will do I will do jobs for money, of course, but I will also do jobs for favors. Uh, the first job is always free in exchange for a favor. I'm going to call up one of my contacts in, let's, um, probably one of the, um, obviously not a reputable gang, but one of those that have our street informers or if there's a street informant group okay that may know back alleyways and stuff i'm hoping to call up one of them that might have a way of sneaking us in all right i'm going to give you a name here uh the name of your contact is asaya yama asaya yama so um ikari is just going to pull out her agent um push a few buttons that or dial an extension that she seems to have memorized, so not saved into the phone itself. Uh, Isayama? Yeah, it's Ikari. So, remember that uh, job I did for you a few days back where you had those um, bugs that you needed to make a little stealthy? Yeah, no, yes. Yes, those ones. No, I don't want to know how you use them. I don't care that you found your ex-husband that way. No. This is not the deal we came up with. Look, anyways, I'm willing to do another favor if you. I'm willing to do another work, or I'm willing to work uh, pro bono if you're willing to front me a favor. Yeah, yeah, Circus Tokyo. Of course, you can hear it over the agent. Yeah. Well, look, some friends of mine and I are. Well, let's face it, we really need to get inside and meet a friend. No, I can't get you tickets. No, no, I'm not going to see her. We're going to see a friend in there. We just have to get through. All right. Service? Uh, yeah. Oh, I was going to say, so this is probably where I actually started to speak for him. And mm -hmm. Asayama says, well, uh, tell me a little bit about what, what kind of security would I have to be working with here? Uh, um, I'm going to send a... I'm going to hook my agent up to my optics... Uh, my optic imager. 
Okay. And send him pictures of the main entrance. Okay. And uh, yeah. All right. So uh, after a moment, he takes a look at the picture and kind of thinks for a moment and says, "Well, that's uh, if, at least if it's looking the way I think it is. That's a Mark II weapon scanner. Uh, it can be easily confused if you uh, say overload it uh, from a short range away." Uh, however, uh, I'm just going to throw this out there. If you're meeting someone, could they not come out to you? I'm just going to look at Chono for a second. Um, theatrically mute the, f mute the phone by putting a thumb over the, um, the speaker or the microphone. Hey, boss, can your friend come to us? Uh, as far as I know, I didn't have contact information for him. He contacted me. Or I was contacted through an intermediary. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to pick up resume talk. Yeah, it's one of those met through a fr met a friend through a friend. Don't have proper intel info for the direct contact. You know how it goes. Mm. You seem to like that sort of thing, but hey, I wouldn't come to you if uh, you weren't exciting. Uh, okay, so I guess my recommendation would be that uh, either you try and overload it as you are passing through it. Uh, again, it should be something that someone with your skills could do. Uh, however, it might at the same time temporarily knock your Chrome offline, so be aware of that. Uh, other than that, uh, I don't know, fire escapes, something of that nature. Probably guarded right through the, the scanner overload, probably the best way. All right, thanks, Asayama. Let me know when you have an, Let me know when you need me to do a job for you. Of course, and the line goes dead. So I'm going to take quick stock of the individuals here. Uh, Chono, do you have any do you have any implants or chrome on you? Um, just ears and eyes. Okay. Yeah, don't want to risk overloading that. Um, did uh, Enzo bring his briefcase? Until I found out there was a scanner, I probably still have it. I'm assuming there was some sort of luggage and coat check. <laughs> right. Did we need someone with implants? Mm. Trying to figure out something to overload a scanner. Um, Xavier, you know, how much do you know about uh, electromagnetic uh, interference and pulse resonance waves? A little bit. I'm going to get a sly grin on my face as I look at Xavier and look at Enzo's um, briefcase. <clears throat> Mutter to myself that agents are sadly getting more expensive, but at the same time, it's a burner. Um, I'm going to do a basic tech function on the on my agent and set it to... I'm going to reverse the polarity on the battery, uh, mm -hmm. remove the uh, electromagnetic uh, safeties, or regulators, I should say, and set the whole thing to basically overheat and explode. You know, the, the main reason that the uh, FAA wants you to actually carry the lithium-ion batteries onto the plane with you instead of, you know... I assume that they'll explode in a similarly... Um, Spectacular fashion? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. So yeah, go ahead and roll your uh, your basic tech here. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what the DV is uh, because pass or fail, I'm going to tell you the same thing. Of course. Um, <laughs> I'm going to throw two points of luck at this. Okay. So that is a 25. Uh, well, uh, you are extremely confident that uh, you have now made a throwable EMP grenade of some sort. Uh, you probably don't want to have it in your pocket when it goes because it will uh, start to burn through your clothing very quickly. But you now have a, uh, as I said, you have a EMP grenade that you could use at your discretion. Excellent. Do we, is it on a timer or... Uh, uh, I would say you could push a button and it would give you like a five or ten second window. Okay. Uh, next stage of the operation. Um, 
find a woman with a stroller or you know one of those roll roll along um carts or yeah and surreptitiously drop said phone into said stroller and basically it's going to go off how i have it planned is it will go off around the time that this individual crosses the uh scanner um, so it's not related directly to us. I'm sure if they look over security footage, they'll see us eventually. But by that point, hopefully we will be in and out. And have Officer Lance on speed dial. Um, I don't want the phone to explode and, you know, cause damage to people, just electronics. Right. Yeah. Is uh, Would that be a sneaky roll of some sort? Uh, it would, uh, but before you do that, I would remind you that even if you took out the weapon scanner, there's still the matter of getting pa past the bouncers at the door. And the line is quite long at this point. Um, let's use uh, this image that I have you on at the moment. Uh, sort of that long line of people uh, that stretches off into the distance. Um, that is essentially the line waiting to get in. And you're not seeing anyone with, like, a stroller. I mean, you're seeing people Darn. with purses that you could probably put it in. Um, but you're also seeing that the line is not moving, like, at all. The only people that are getting in and out are VIPs. Are there... And they're, they're holding a paper list. They are holding a paper list, yes. Is there any reflective surfaces behind them? Uh, I would say that thanks to the, uh, ever present neon glowing, uh, you know, style of quote unquote today's world. Uh, yes, there is some form of mirrored surface where you could potentially spy on the list if you so wish. It's it, that, uh, anyone have a, a really good cyber eye with some sort of action. Uh, mm, I just have low light. No, um, I got a picture. Uh, let's see. Well, what I would say is that anyone with a cyber eye could probably make this roll, um, but I'm going to only let one of you do it. So it's really whoever either has the best luck or feels the most confident in uh, trying to pass this. McCall, do you have the cyber optic as well? Yeah, I do. We're probably the same pre-gen. Probably. Um, you want to do it? You want me to do it? Uh, I'm good too. Yeah, I'm hand. I'm at the moment so busy working on all the phone stuff and sort of just saying, you figure the rest out. I'm dealing with the scanner. Right there, you can see it. Holding up the paper, so wait for someone to come by. Get all a couple right. names. All right. So yeah, go ahead and roll me a uh, perception, please. Twenty-one. You guys are rolling uh, quite well today. So, um, you are able to get a few names. Uh, however, uh, you also notice something else, and it's almost comical in the way it's put on the top of the page. Almost like, you know, whoever's running security doesn't trust the people at the door to remember this. But it literally says, if you have any concerns, immediately contact me. My number is... and it gives a number. <clears throat> I'll turn to the guys. Got some of the names, but a very interesting message at the top that we could probably use to our advantage. Does it have a name with the number? It does. It is Kitamara. Or Kitamura, I should say. Okay. Um, I'll pull out my agent. What? Uh, that's the my contact. What's the the number it gave? I read off the number. Um, and I will give them a call. Alright. So it rings twice, a third time. Starts to get about halfway through the fourth one when uh, someone picks up. And uh, it sounds like a very exasperated uh, gentleman on the other. And he says, what? I'm very busy. What's going on? Uh, this is Chono. I was sent by the family to handle a job for you. But I'm finding it difficult to get in the building. Ah, Chono, I have been told to expect you. Uh, I will give word to my <clears throat> men that you are to be allowed through. Uh, have you brought any people with you? I have um, four others. 
And they are immediately with you, yes? Yes. Very good. I will tell my guards to let you in without any scanning purposes. Now, of course, I don't think I need to make it clear here that uh, if you decide to start shooting up my club, there will be consequences for the family. I understand that, but I also feel that you would not get in the way of me handling the job that you have hired me to do. I'd rather not discuss anything about the job over open comms, but rest assured your job here is not involving the concert. I thought it was simply a nice gesture to allow you all to experience the concert before we talked business. Ah. Very well. Um, we will walk up to the side of your security checkpoint and uh, await to be let in. Very good. And he just clicks it down after that. So apparently we're on the list now. I suppose we should have checked that first. Well, we weren't on the list to, be to begin with, but the check? person who's a who apparently owns this place is my contact, and he said that he will let us uh, he will tell security people not to scan us or let us in but apparently the concert has nothing to do with our job so I traded a free job for nothing <sighs> I smirk I sigh as I deactivate the phone bomb well it's kind of what happens when you don't know what you're doing and you're just told go to this place talk to this person they give you job that is true I've had bigger jobs All right. So, if I hear correctly, you walk up to the bouncers, and of course the bouncers do get a little bit stiff as they look over your rather well-dressed party, uh, and one of the lead bouncers comes up to you, just kind of holds out a hand of stop, and says, I'm going to need your names, friend. My name is Chono, but you should probably call Kitamura and ask him who I am. He looks at you for a moment and says... Hold on. Puts a, fing a finger to his ear. Says, uh, Kitamura-san, we have a Cho... I will let him in, sir. Sorry for wasting your time. And uh, there's almost like an admonishment, like he's embarrassed that he may had to make that call in the first place, but he very quickly uh, turns and kind of does an open gesture to the door and says, please, come in. Uh, go ahead and proceed through the weapon scanner. Uh, I have been told that uh, you are to be trusted with whatever you have on hand. Chona will just kind of fix his jacket, thank you, and walk through the scanner and not even pay any mind to the people who are probably throwing a fit standing in line. Oh yeah, like the people who literally are at the front of the line and just saw you walk up are going, Hey, why are you letting him in? I've been standing here for hours. And, you know, general discontent. But yeah. So, uh, the four of you finally enter into Circus Tokyo. Now, Circus Tokyo, as I said, initially it was a very small club. Um, but given the Fourth Corporation War and the damage to the city, um, it has made it very easy for Circus Tokyo to expand and become one of the hottest places in the Tokyo nightlife. Now... I should say that initially you start heading for the uh, quote-unquote dance floor, but a guard uh, stops you uh, about halfway and says, uh, Kitamura-san has told me that uh, you are to be given a VIP booth uh, if you would please follow me. And uh, he motions towards a hallway that splinters off from the main thoroughfare. And uh, unless you do otherwise, uh, he takes you up what is essentially a spiral staircase and the spiral staircase kind of comes up into what is a VIP box area. Uh, there's about seven or eight tables that are each in their own little uh, unique section. And it's almost like you're at the catwalk area. So same level as the lights and the speakers. Um, and it gives you a good view of the dance floor and for the, uh, the main stage. Um, and once you all are situated, um, the guard says... Uh, please, if you need anything, uh, let one of us know. Uh, you can order what you wish from the unit there. Uh, and he points at a circular disc that sits on the table. Uh, I should mention, by the way, that these booths are uh, U-shaped, which means they're pretty much uh, circular, cut off in the middle. That gives you an opening towards the stage. 
Um, and in the middle of the what appears to be a deep mahogany table uh, is a glowing uh, red disc uh, that, if you were to touch it, would begin to display a holographic menu and let you order through it kind of a thing. Well, uh, people, um, I'm going to open the holographic menu and over order the some of the more exotic options from it while saying while looking at Shona over my shoulder say people who know people are the best kind of people generally speaking yes they can also be the worst kind of people what the heck have you gotten us into I have no idea well at least that means we're on equal footing you you know as much as I do I was contacted, told to meet someone, and they would give me a job. And here we are. Well, if I'm going to die, I'm going to die with a full stomach for a change. Ooh, California sushi rolls? Wow, haven't had those in ages. All right. So there's a little bit of time where, you know, you guys are just talking amongst yourselves, you know, basically passing time. And then all of a sudden, the house lights dim and a cheer goes up in the crowd as the light show that you're kind of seeing on screen at the moment. So vibrant rainbow display of lights and otherwise uh, fancy uh, light show uh, begin going off. And a gentleman uh, walks out on stage. And as he speaks, uh, Chono, you immediately recognize that this is Kitamura-san. And uh, Kitamura uh, starts speaking and he says, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to Circus Tokyo. I promise tonight will be one that you will remember for the rest of your lives. It is my great honor and pleasure to introduce you to you, the one, the only, Kurachan. And uh, he sort of s begins stepping off to the side. The music begins to beat. It is a very heavy beat, a very uh, upbeat sort of kawaii if i were to coin a phrase a uh, kawaii uh sort of music and stepping out on stage is uh kurasan or kurasan uh pretty much what you might have expected from an idol um they have a uh, stylized purple hair um that is sort of made into a ponytail at the back uh with one side of the head partially shaved partially crone uh, corn road and the other half uh, folded over to the side. And uh, they have vibrant yellow eyes. And they, they're obviously artificial. And she's dressed in a typical idol attire. Which means a uh, not quite revealing um, but still tantalizing sort of outfit. Um, and she immediately goes, Hi everyone! Thank you for coming to my concert! And right as uh, the vocal part of the song would kick in is when she begins to sing. Now, uh, as the concert goes on, of course, anything you ordered arrives. It's actually quite well. Uh, every, anything you get, whether it be food or drink, it is not only the best thing you've had in a while, um, but it is probably the best thing you might have in your entire life. Uh, it is just that good. Um, however, as the set goes on, um, all of you would notice that uh, you have a figure walking towards your booth, and it is none other than uh, Kitamura-san. And I'll put you guys on the map here just uh, for reference. But yeah, uh, Kitamura-san uh, comes right up to your booth, uh, doesn't even wait for you tell to you know offer him a chair, uh, slides into the booth and says... All right, Chono. Uh, I'm gonna be level. I'm gonna level with you here. Uh, I sort of lied earlier when I said that this concert had no bearing on your job. You see Kurachan down there, right? Yes. Is she the kind target? Kind of hard to miss. No, she is not your target. And in fact, if you put any form of harm on her, it will be your head on the chopping block. But more to the point. She has come to me and told me that she needs to deal with a concern of hers. A fan that's too much of a fan? Honestly, I'm not quite sure. She was very vague about whether it was a problem with popularity, whether it was a fan, or if it was anything that could relate to something I could handle. 
thus, I thought it best to reach out to the family and find someone who knows how to handle situations. Very well. So again, going from a job where we're not told the whole truth to the job where we're not told any of the problem. So we are to wait for her to be done and then find out from her what the problem is? You can indeed, yes. And that is why I'm fronting the bill for, and he motions at uh, the plate or plates in front of Akari. Uh, that is why I'm covering that out of my own pocket. Uh, I think it is worth saying, if it wasn't clear already, that Kurachan is a valued member of not only uh, my establishment, but in the general community. Again, if anything happens to her, it's going to be your heads on the line. Right. Okay, well, I guess we wait around and then talk to her, being she won't talk to anybody else. Well, I will give you this much. I did a little bit of digging into possible concerns. Apparently there was uh, some form of dispute with her and her previous gang. Uh, you know how rocker boys are. They always start off with a gang of some sort, get popularity, and next thing you know, they're an idol. Uh, that's pretty much what Kurachan is like. She's one of those that rose up from nothing to something. But again, I couldn't tell you in the slightest what this job could entail. Wonderful. Very well. So, again, he looks around at all of you, waits to see if anyone has any questions, and if no one does, he departs back to Parts Unknown. So, yeah. I'm sorry, I had my ears turned down to half volume. I really don't like this type of music. We're doing the job for her? We're doing the job for him. For, for her. him. For her. Doesn't as matter as long as, as long as we get paid. Uh, doesn't matter as long as I get fed. This stuff's delicious. Here, For have one. Mary, it is excellent. Mm, proper seafood. Delightful. Better than that stuff that comes free 3D printed out of a tube. Also known as kibble for those of you fans at home. <laughs> Do not kibble. Alright. Well. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh. Okay. Uh, so, um, uh, if we're in the VIP booth, do we get like VIP badges or something? Because if we're doing a job for uh, Kure Chan, we're going to have to somehow get to Kure Chan. And if these pop idols, are, or if she's like every other pop idol, there will be roughly, and I do a quick imaginary count on my fingers roughly 200 if not 2,000 bodies between us and her as soon as she's off stage what I will say is that part of the area you were led to remember that corridor that split off from the main one and then went up a spiral staircase um, what you would have noticed uh, on your way in is that the hallway continued to curve and uh, I tell you what let's make a roll of this uh, give me a, I think another perception here would fit. Okay. That or, uh, I could conceivably give you tracking. Tracking would be a stretch, but I could see an argument for it. Well, uh, considering I don't have tracking and I do have perception, I'll take perception. Okay. Not the okay. best role in the world. Hey, 17. Uh, honestly, the DV here was just a basic 14, so everyday challenge, so you pass it fine. Uh, what you're guessing is that if you were to go back down the stairs and follow the corridor around, uh, you might be basically cutting off the entire, you know, throng of people in front of you uh, and immediately arrive backstage without any issue. I will communicate this to... Um... Chono, uh, Xavier, and Enzo with the suggestion that we head now before she does her uh, contract mandated encore. All the information as quickly as possible is always good. Agreed. Sure. 
All right. So uh, you maybe take one last uh, bit of drink, uh, one last bite, and uh, head down and start heading backstage. And uh, not a moment too soon, as sure enough, after about five or ten minutes of you idling uh, in the sort of uh, space between the actual stage and the back of the stage, you know, there's sort of that partition with the curtain, etc., etc. Um, you're sort of lingering back there with guards and uh, tech personnel. Um, but the point is, is that uh, Kurachan uh, finishes her set and uh, she says, all right, thank you, everyone. Remember, Kawhi for life. And then uh, to a thunderous applause and we love you, Kurachan. Uh, she, uh, you know, proceeds off stage and the follow up band uh, immediately comes on and starts playing a set. But even without, you know, looking out of the crowd, you can tell that uh, everybody was here for Kurachan and that most of the people in the club are beginning to filter out at this point. Um, but what's relevant to you all is that Kurachan uh, comes backstage, uh, does say hello to some of the VIPs that have been gathered, uh, and then she walks immediately up to you, Chono, uh, and says, And you must be Mr. Chono. It's a pleasure. And she holds out her hand. Uh, I shake her hand. I am Chono. I hear that you have a problem. Yes, um... She looks around and judges that she can just tell you this now without having to take you into a back room or anything. I have a problem with, uh, certain former associates of mine. Uh, the Purple Foxes Gang. If you haven't heard of them, trust me, they're nothing important. But the matter at hand is that, um, I used to be one of them. I used to be their rocker boy or rocker girl, whatever it's appropriate to say these days. My point being is that some of my quote unquote mega fans have begun uh, trying to insinuate that I'm still a member of the Purple Foxes. And just telling them that you're not just doesn't work for them she kind of blinks a few times and looks you up and down and says you've not really worked in the uh, entertainment career have you no but i figured someone with the range of your voice that the people that are your fans would listen to you over anyone else doing whatever you tell them to do oh don't get me wrong there are fans like that but at the same time you can't convince everyone with just words So then what would you like us to do? Well, I would like you to eliminate the purple foxes. Oh, there's the rub. And how many of them are there? Well, again, it's been almost a decade since I last ran with them, but I do know that their main warehouse uh, is down by the wharf, and usually there's about eight to ten of them. Lovely. And, um, how, uh, armed, how well defended is this warehouse, who the leader person is? The leader, again, it's been a while, but the last one, uh, that I was familiar with was a gentleman, uh, named Usi. And I'll put that in chat for you. Hmm. Let me guess. Uh, jilted, uh, jilted fan joined the gang just roughly the same time you rose to level of popularity within the gang, separated from the gang, and he has now taken up the mantle. That would be my assumption. Yes. I just sigh and roll my eyes. Boys. It's written like a bad kids' novel. Um. Okay, we will handle the problem. And what are we talking about as far as payment goes? Because I'm sure Kitamura is not going to cover the payment for you as well. Oh, no, no, no. I am prepared to pay you a generous sum, a generous sum of uh, new yen out of my own personal funds. Uh, however, uh, there is a small caveat that I would like to bring to your attention. 
mainly that uh, in order to find the warehouse in question, you're going to need me to come with you. Lovely. You kind of stand out. Can you dull down and Chono kind of waves his hand over like in a circle in front of her. Mm -hmm. This whole fluorescence and uh, she openly laughs, like, you know, full-on, like, belly laugh at this. And she says, <laughs> you know what year it is, right? I mean, flashy is in. In fact, look at yourselves. You're pretty damn flashy yourselves. The word we, the word we uh, approve is stylish. But it, you are also a recognizable celebrity figure. You understand that part, correct? Right, which is why I want you to live stream the whole thing. I'm sorry, what? You heard me. I want you to live stream the purple foxes being taken down. This strikes me as several kinds of illegal. Uh, yeah. Especially with our faces and everything are the ones that are actually going to be doing, you know, the dirty work and yeah. facing the repercussions and nothing's going to come back to you. She kind of looks over you all. Do you not know a net runner? No, we don't. We no. don't have one. We decided not to deal with that ball of um, rules and roles. <laughs> <laughs> well, net, net runners come with their own brand of crazy that I have. The one group of people that I refuse to do service to if they show any signs of cyber psychosis. Well, then perhaps the live stream is off the table. Uh, however, I guess modifying this on the fly, I would like to be the one that handles whoever's spreading this rumor from within their gang. Well, I guess it's not really a rumor, but you know what I mean. Fair enough. I just sort of look to the gang and go, yeah, she'll stand out in a crowd. Thankfully, we know a guy who actually owns a car. Yeah, and if he's doing what he should be doing, he should be pulling it up outside. So... That's the horde sounds. <laughs> Alright, um... Uh, sure. We, I'm sure we can handle the rest of the group if you want to handle this Usi. Or whoever's spreading the rumor. It might be best not to indiscriminately kill them. Maybe injure them until we figure out who it is. That sounds like up my alley and I crack my knuckles. That seems much harder than just setting the warehouse on fire. Well, I, I have a backup plan in case this all goes sour. Um, okay. We will go and... Um, we can handle this now. I mean, you're not doing an encore. The other band's out there running off all your fans. Yeah, I honestly don't know what Kitamara-san was thinking. Like, they're horrible. Why Why put well, them on after me? I mean, you, you, you don't know that the bass player is his nephew? Ah, uh, well, that explains things. Also, if they can drive everyone away immediately after the concert, there will be fewer people to or fear paparazzi out there to take pictures of you doing potentially shady things. And speaking of which, that's why we won't be going out the VIP entrance. We will be going out as much of a main entrance as we can. And, um... Hmm. Change your hair a little bit, change your mask a little bit, and you'll just look like someone cosplaying as you. I like where your head's at. And, uh... Part of the uh, part of the setting for again those of you that are new to the setting, um, because she is wearing what is essentially smart clothing, uh, with not but a mental command or maybe even an entered command. Her entire outfit can shift and change colors and patterns. Same thing with her hair, so she must have some sort of special implant or something that modifies her hair as well. Uh, the point being that she goes from a very vibrant purple and yellow to a more blue and green. Perfect. 
now you'll just look like someone who dressed up as you to come see you instead of looking as you. And someone who apparently doesn't know their colors. Apparently. But you know how it is. People always cosplay and then they want to change something to make it look like something that you wore one time at one show at one thing that no one else ever would know other than them. She laughs again and like does that friendly thing where like she, you know, pats you on the shoulder and says, Chono, my friend, I have never worn these colors. They're atrocious. Hmm. Don't worry, after tonight, there will be plenty of people saying that you've worn those colors at least twice, this being the second time. Because that's how they work. You're right. Well, let's do this thing. The scream sheet was right. Kawaii culture is weird. <laughs> All right. Imagine being me. All right. So, where is this warehouse at? So, uh, you start to discuss where the warehouse is, and you head uh, back outside. And for the benefit of Bishop, who, thank you for joining us, Bishop. Uh, Bishop, you were told, uh, last you at least heard from Chono and the rest of the individuals, that you were to bring around the car uh, at a given time. Now, of course, given Tokyo traffic, uh, you are literally cutting it you know, close enough that you could count the millisecond. Um, but you more or less pull up in front of the club known as the Circus Tokyo as a large amount of people are exiting it. And you sort of look through the crowd, try and spot your friends. And sure enough, after a few moments, uh, they exit. And with them is a individual that is uh, part of the Kawaii culture at first glance, a quote unquote body con or a body-conscious individual, as the uh, phrase goes. Uh, she is uh, wearing both green and purple, a very uh, tantalizing but not outright revealing outfit, and uh, has sort of one side of her head is uh, folded over hair, the other side is cornrows and shaved, and then behind her is a very vibrant ponytail. Um, it's a good thing, airbags, that uh, your car is so large because in order to fit everyone, uh, you pretty much have to pack them in tight. I'd say so I'll sort of look over from the driver's seat as they all get in. So, uh, who's the squeaky toy? Talking about me or her? She, uh, she is actually our benefactor for this little job. And uh, when we get done with this, being seeing as how we're using your car so much, uh, maybe you should paint it or get it painted. Perhaps yeah, you could. I mean, it. yeah. And he sort of like looks over at the car and like again, the car looks extremely beat up. It is a nice shade of rust, kind of that's been sort of grayed out. It, well, it I know. It is probably the shabbiest looking car that Kure has ever been in. I, I'm I'm just assuming that you uh, probably would not let anyone else work on it, so... Hence why I said either you paint it, or we should get it painted. Eh. Well, I've been getting a decent amount of cash these last couple of days. Probably worth splurging. Anyway, where to? Uh, Kurachan? And uh, via her agent, she sh uh, sends coordinates to what is essentially your GPS. And sure enough, it is a location uh, on the sort of... I'm trying to remember the actual name for it, but unfortunately it's slipping my mind. Basically, there's a part of Tokyo that opens up into the bay. It's not in Shibuya, but it's, again, the wharf area. I'll remember it probably in like 10 minutes. But anyway, uh, the coordinates are uh, one of the sort of warehouse districts that back up to the bay. And uh, the specific coordinates, it'll take you about maybe about an hour to get there, given tonight's traffic. <clears throat> Hope you all brought some tunes. And he sort of pulls out into the road and heads off. We literally did. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's a very good point. We literally brought music with us. Um, we brought so tunes... Uh, oh, sorry, I'm interrupting. Go ahead. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, uh, we brought the tunes. Did you bring my, uh, did you bring my armory? 
Yeah, and he sort of like uh, sticks his thumb over his head and like points at the seat you're sitting on. That's just, um, just underneath the shotgun. Slick. I'll take my shotgun. Um, <laughs> while he's driving, I'm assu- uh, I like to assume to, that to we're all... To be fair, th- this is all underneath the seat, so it's a bit tricky to get to while you're in the car. Oh, yes, I presume that we're doing some sort of um, Cirque du Soleil contortions while you're driving to get our gear w- while we're moving. It's quite humorous. A and I foot hit the back window. I fall into Enzo and Xavier and Chono and Kurechan far more times than I'd like. And Elbow is in my ear again. Well, well there are actually hard. some like handheld rungs up on the ceiling in odd places, which are really convenient. Um, and while we're doing this, I'll fill airbags in on what the job is. Okay. So give okay, him so... Uh, give him the in character version, because again, since Bishop was running late, I think he missed most of it. Oh yeah, no, I have not heard anything. I literally came in as you were discussing me turning up. Mm-hmm. All right, we okay. So we're like we're setting fire to a warehouse or something. No, that's Plan B. Um, that's like yeah, Plan B or Plan C. Um, so, um, so, Kirchan here apparently used to be a part of a, a gang called the Purple Foxes, who's yeah, still, she's one of them. Who people have started Fox. rumors, even though it's been a decade that she is still a member, she wants that to stop because it's hurting her image. So we're going to go in to rough them up. And she is going to deal with the person who started the rumor herself. But we are there to make sure that the rest of them don't get froggy and or, um, well, to teach them a lesson. But we're not going into wholesale, just murder everybody. Hence why burning it down is the plan B. Plan. We do have a plan C, or at least I have a plan C. All right, so rough them up, give them a scare, try not to kill anyone. Yeah, but again, I would say if anybody shoots us, we we shoot back. I was really starting uh, to like my y- current y- You identity. don't survive long as a nomad by giving people second chances. Nope. The weapon's pointed at your face. Well, let me put it this way. Age-old saying, if somebody tries to kill you, you kill them right back. Save my life more times than I can count. I was really getting used to this identity, too. Oh. Is there some sort of, like, you know, like, Snapchat? If you record something on Snapchat, you can put, like, filters on and stickers on people's faces so they look like white I people. Assume, I is there a Netrunner, you could do that. If is there, well, it's just, like, a, an app. I'm just wondering, is there a, a, the equivalent for a live streaming in 2040? Uh, in 2050? Stickers? Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it would make sense that even without a Netrunner, you could do the basic thing of, like, blurring faces and otherwise obscuring your identity. It's just going to be harder because you don't have a Netrunner to edit it live. Then, of course, you could still choose to just not live stream it, but it's whether it's really your call whether you do so or not. Oh, like, do we want to stop by somewhere and grab some ski masks? For a minute. Yeah. I think um, that's the, the best plan, yes. We'll get we'll, maybe some, you know, those rubber masks that look like dead presidents and then sticker those. I'm sorry, are you all mental? We have the option not to do live streaming. And she says this in character in the van. Right. So real yeah. quick, uh, which pro- which probably causes like uh, airbags to like briefly swim and go. Hold on, we're live streaming this. That was her request. Yes. So real then- quick, um, what I would say is uh, this is a good opportunity to talk about how reputation works. Now, um, reputation is pretty much what it says on the tin. It is sort of how people know you. You know people in the area, people worldwide, etc., etc. Um, for example, let's say uh, you do something that gets you noticed. Uh, your reputation goes up a level. 
uh, right now, all of you uh, are literally reputation zero, which means nobody gives a crap about who you are or what you're doing. Um, Curry Chan, for example, is more like a level seven where a news story or two uh, has been written about their exploits and that they're pretty regularly featured on the screen sheets. Um, basically, what Reputation does is when first meeting someone new, uh, you roll a d10, and if you roll under your reputation, it means the people you are talking with have heard of you and will react uh, favorably or perhaps disfavorably, depending on what sort of a reputation you have. And it's something I should clarify that reputation can be both good and bad. Um, so it's really how you go about presenting yourself and go about your jobs that defines, you know, your reputation and reputation is one of those things where, um, you know, it's, it's sort of paramount to, you know, the feel where you're doing things to be cool. You're doing things to further your reputation. Um, and, and live streaming the beatdown of someone in the warehouse. Is uh, that cool uh, or reputation? Uh, I think it's all about the presentation of how you do it. Um, as so, someone has pointed out, though, I do have to say one more quick thing. Sure. Um, the other thing you can do with reputation is, let's say you're facing down someone. Um, let's say, for example, uh, someone walks up to you guys and courage on and says, hey, uh, leave the input and the rest of you get lost. Input, of course, being the in-setting name for girlfriend. Um, so what would happen is there's two ways to go about this. Um, you obviously play it out and probably shoot them in the process, or you do it as essentially an intimidation, a cool role that is added by your reputation plus a d10. So if you imagine reputation is kind of like another attribute that you would then use for roles kind of a thing. Okay. But that's all I have um, to say, so continue. Yeah. No, 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 no. Um, so then the reputation would be added to the cool role to intimidate someone of, like, they know who we are? Yep. Okay. Um, but it's not a pool like luck. No, so your reputation does stay uh, across sessions, and it's okay. something that is awarded by me, the GM. Gotcha. Um, okay, so then bringing it all back. Uh, so then, Kurachan, this live stream thing... We wouldn't have to live stream the whole thing, just the person who started the rumor um, reneging on the rumor? That would be acceptable, yes. So, and I'll look to everybody else, so we can handle all the dirty business, find out the person who started the rumor, and then video them saying that it was all a rumor to gain rep, and that they're just full of shit. Seems like a plan. Which will hopefully do the opposite for their rep and make them be somebody nobody wants to work with. I shrug and go, whatever. I love it. Yeah, well, uh, if you guys are okay with it, I guess. <laughs> it's just a thought. Is... Did she say something about we were going to get paid more if we live streamed it? Yep. Significantly more. Mm. Mm. Well, that does change things a little. All right. So if we can pull it off, we pull it off. If we can't, we can't. The live stream part, I mean. Uh, quick question. Do any of you actually have cameras? We all do on our, um, our agents, right? You do. And you also, those of you with cyber eyes, uh, part of the benefit of having a cyber eye is that you can record and uh, basically live stream from your eyes. Um, oh, well, Airbags does have that option. Yeah, I've got cyber optics, but it just says low light. Yeah, um, same thing. I'm pretty yeah, sure that's like, I think that's the only like cyber eye available in the jump start, but I'm just okay. going to say that, yes, as a basic feature, um, your cyber eyes could both record and live stream. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Well, we have our agent on. Yeah. And if need be, my agent has um, an AI security in it. So, and I'm sure. Um, 
Kurochan probably has an agent with the best security anybody could ever possibly buy. Mm hmm. Because you really don't want those pictures leaked. Nope. So, okay. Then I guess we'll go in, we'll clear the building, and then Kurochan can go in after us and figure out. I mean, do you know who started the rumor, or are you just guessing that it's this Usi? It would be my guess that they're the ones responsible. Okay. So, yeah, I guess we'll just go to the building and we'll start our way there. All right. So, after uh, about an hour and a half, thanks to the traffic, you do finally arrive at the coordinates given. And what you find is that uh, it is warehouse after warehouse after warehouse that leads up to the docks. Uh, where there are a number of cargo ships and other uh, seafaring vessels currently docked. Uh, but really, there's no activity going on tonight. Uh, probably either because it's raining or there's just simply nothing to offload, unload. Um, but Kurichan immediately directs your attention towards uh, this building here. Now, even from uh, a street-level view, like unless you literally pull out front... Um, you aren't going to be noticed right away, but you would be able to see through the windows what's going on. So what you can tell is that this warehouse, it's fairly small. Uh, it's maybe all of, uh, let's see, do quick math here. Uh, it's about uh, 400 square meters, uh, which isn't terribly huge, but it is enough that you're seeing that they have uh, three cars, all tinted purple, with the purple fox logo, which is basically a uh, a sort of a tigerish uh, fox, if that makes any sense, that's in a swirl uh, for a logo. And uh, three cars are tinted purple with that logo on them. And then in the back uh, is another car that is in the process of uh, either being stripped or otherwise modified to resemble the other three. Uh, immediately looking around, you would see that there are a total of um, six um, six individuals that are all wearing the same logo. And uh, it's pretty clear that these are the purple foxes you're looking for. Uh, if not, because Curry Chan says, yeah, that's them. Alrighty, so airbags will sort of park the SUV uh, block away so that the engine doesn't give us away straight away. And in case you uh, need to know what things on the map are, so obviously these things to the east and the and the west, those are the doors, the warehouse doors. Um, the things behind the cars and things of that nature that are not actual walls, those are windows. Uh, they go from almost floor to ceiling. There's maybe about a two foot gap between where the uh, bottom of the building starts and the windows start. And then the only other thing I would say you would get with your drive-by kind of a thing is that you do see that there are a large amount of auto parts on what appear to be shelves. And that's what these uh, orange sort of figures are, are the shelves. Alrighty, uh, Kari, if you could uh, pass me that pistol. And he sort of like indicates to a corner of the seat catch thing. Ah, yes. Here here you go. And it's a... Because I'm not sure exactly what a very heavy pistol is in the rules, but uh, in the, this case, I'd imagine it's something that looks like it was very definitely bodged together from a couple of things. It looked like it might have been a flare gun originally. Yeah, I think it's probably safe to say that you would be carrying around the equivalent of a Desert Eagle, like something with very heavy ordnance. All right. I've definitely been like stripped down and had bits put onto it to keep it functional. Mm -hmm. All right, so there should be the um, the map set up for you. Of course, you do not have to enter as I've put you down at the moment. Um, it is just a matter of you know this is kind of what you're looking at and how you want to enter the scene. Hmm. Um, I'm just going to look at Chono and 
I mean, I've, I have no experience in breaking down warehouses and hurting people. That is, I mean, I do, but usually it's from a moving car. That is pretty much all my experience. Sorry. The warehouses and hurting people. Out of character, sorry. Handling that. Um, well, I mean, if we want to go in and talk to them and tell them, you know, knock their crap off. Or just to rough them up. And we can just walk right in. Um, we can come in from either side. Um, I think having some of us coming to the front, some of us coming into the rear makes sense. Yeah. Someone in to negotiate first. I, I mean, I'm pretty sure this isn't a negotiate kind of job. True. Um, yeah, but we also want to cut them off from running away. So then, yeah, I'll I'll go through this this the door that on the map we're all on the side of with mm -hmm. um, Kurchan and Akari. Do you want Kurchan? Don't leave in the line of fire. Uh, true. If he dies, we don't get paid. Um, or we get all the money. And then you three come in the back um, looking as big as you are and I think they will probably um, hopefully get the message. Yeah. That's the idea anyways. Right. So these three would be coming in from over here. Alrighty. Enzo takes his jacket off and puts it in the car. And kind of taps on the chest of his like big vest, and it kind of like spans outward, kind of like an Iron Man suit to just kind of give him a bit more body coverage, just to justify how he's got the body armor the pregen. Hmm. Um, it, it, airbags just has a great coat with plates sewn into it. Uh, so yeah, we'll just go in through that front door. Um. And, uh, yeah, we'll just go in that front door and, and either let Curry Chan or myself do the talking, I guess. I don't know why I'm doing talking, but yeah. It's right. probably your macho and charismatic attitude, boss. Hey, you effers, stop. Are we good? Cool. Let's go home. <laughs> um... But yeah, we'll walk in that door, and uh, I, I guess the the message to the other three will be that um, walk in when we see you walk in. Yeah. Okay. That'll work. So go ahead and uh, start moving yourselves uh, into the place, and I'll move Curry Chan somewhere in the back so that she again is not in the immediate line of fire. Uh, so Chono, once you uh, get inside. You know, the, again, the doors are wide open on both ends. But, uh, Chona, when you walk in, um, the boosters, uh, the purple foxes, they automatically, like, they. one of them says, Hey, who the hell are you? And all of them turn to look at you. Uh, and Chona, with you in the front, uh, you are uh, immediately noticing that all of the boosters are carrying what appear to be uh, heavy pistols of their own. Um, they also are wearing uh, some form of leathers, so not exactly the best armor in town, but it is armor nonetheless. Uh, but other than that, you're not really noticing anything super special about them. They all seem to have the sort of generic haircut. Uh, well, maybe not generic, but it is very similar to Curry Chan's in that uh, it is sort of a shaved uh, half on one side, and then it sort of folds over with the hair on the other. Um, all of them appear to be male. You're not seeing any female uh, members of the Purple Foxes. Um, and we'll say that the first one, the one closest to you, uh, the blue dot, uh, kind of steps up to you. A pistol not pointed at you, but clearly drawn and ready. Says, look, friend, you, you, you're not welcome here. This isn't for you. Just go turn around and go home. No, I don't think you understand. Um, so... Which one of you has been spreading rumors about my client? 
then blue kind of looks around and everybody you know all the other boosters are looking at themselves and are like sorry what what rumors do you think we've been spreading uh, about the fact that Kurachan is still a member of your little social club. Oh, and the the booster kind of looks past you and says, "Oh, I see what's going on here." Well, I think uh, what Kurachan is forgetting to tell you is that uh, we've been running her drugs the entire time, and now she's trying to scrub us out of it. I see how this is going down. And Curry Chen oh, says, um, no, I don't do any sort of drug running. Thank you very much. Um, can I, just listening to that, can I do a human perception to see if she's telling the truth or not? You may definitely do a human perception to tell if he, she is doing a, uh, doing a lie. That's how we say things. Uh, if she is lying. <laughs> All right. Um, human perception is based off of, uh, EMP. EMP. Um, what the hell? What? EMP. So just, it's not on the the cheat sheet. Oh, that's abilities. So that's why. Okay. Um, there we go. Let's see a sixteen. I mean. You know, you've known her for only a short amount of time, but she certainly seems to be either convinced that uh, she's not running drugs or it's the truth. And what the uh, Purple Foxes member is saying is just meant to throw you off. Hmm. Interesting. Well, again, that doesn't um, that doesn't read very well. And plus, we're not here to actually scrub you out or whatever crap word you just used we're actually here to find the person who's doing it we want them to renege on what they're saying and then we can all just go about our business and then never have to see each other again unless you guys make a really dumb mistake it is at this point that uh, airbags as uh, you and Xavier and Enzo sort of begin making your way inside uh, I did want to note so Enzo and uh, Xavier are you guys deliberately taking cover or we're waiting until I'm waiting until okay. yeah. stuff starts. Okay, airbags so, a- 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 j- j- is basically just looming to prevent anyone trying to slip out the back unnoticed. Okay, so uh, yellow dot kind of uh, immediately draws his heavy pistol and says, "They've got us from the rear. Look, just just start shooting a man." Oh, and I, I am definitely going to take that as an excuse to shoot him in the leg. Yep. And, and I, I am going to also shoot blue um, in the leg. Yep. So we are going to go into initiative order. All right. So. Um, and initiative is based off of uh, your reflex? reflex. Yes. So D10 plus seven. Cool. Ooh, nice. Mm, not bad. Right. And remember, if you haven't done it already, to reset your HP to full. All right. And then uh, if you could enter in your own initiative as I roll for uh, all six of the boosters. Let's see. So their reflex is actually fairly decent. Okay. Okay. So I can math today. That's a 14. Uh, we'll just say that's a 15. What the? Well, it, that's one of the things about roll 20 is that we, you know, anytime anyone messes with initiative, like it locks other people's out. It's oh, okay. one thing I wish I, they, they change. <laughs> I was typing 12 like four times going, what? Wait, what, what, right. what am I doing uh, wrong? <laughs> All right. And that's an you eight. Like Does armor reset from the last time as well? Uh, yes, it does. I'm going to say it does. Um, we'll say for sake of argument, you found someone to repair your armor. Um, normally, we would role play that out. But again, since this is pretty much like our second time playing, um, my concern is, again, making sure that we're going through basic mechanics before worrying about trying to homebrew in. Well, how do you repair armor? How do you buy things? Etc. Etc. Right. All right. 
So uh, it is at this point that everybody should be in initiative order, which means we are going to start with Akari. So Akari, what are you doing? She's just going to un sigh exas exasperation on her breath as she attempts to take a greenie's um, pelvic area with her shotgun. Okay. Uh, normally, this would be just a uh, straight roll against the given DV. Uh, however, what I'm going to say here is, well, let me ask, um, are you deliberately trying to be non-lethal or are you just aiming to hurt? I'm, they're wearing leathers, and I'm wielding a shotgun. So, um, yeah, we don't, I don't want to kill these people. So, yeah, just a wound. Okay, then what I'm going to say is this will be at a minus... Let's do a minus two on your marksmanship. Yeah. Um, so go ahead and roll me a marksmanship. Uh, a 17 is more than enough for a shotgun... Uh, actually, it is exactly what you need because a shotgun difficulty for you right now is a 15. And with that minus 2, uh, 15 is exactly what you get. So yes, you do indeed hit the booster. Go ahead and roll me some damage, please. Uh, shotgun was 5d6, correct? That is correct. All right. So uh, you shoot him pretty damn uh, good in the left leg, we'll say. And uh, he immediately cries out, and pens, uh, cries out in pain and says, God, why? Why the leg? Oh, quit your bitching. There are several good people who can fit, replace that with chrome. All right. Uh, are you going to move at all, I should say? Uh, I feel perfectly fine using Chono for cover. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right, in that case, we're going to go to Enzo. So Enzo, Jester, uh, since this is your first time, uh, if you didn't know already, you get a yeah. move and an action. Like standard, so yeah, it's, uh, square is not equal to my move, so that's seven, so I'm well within range to walk up. And the PPD, I'm going to try to grab him. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, grapple. Yeah, plus brawling or athletic. Mm -hmm. All right, so their brawl is... Sorry, first one. Yeah, either. No, you're perfectly fine. Uh, let's see. There is... All right. So I have to beat a 19. 19, yes. Survey says with a natural one, they do not. So you have grabbed this individual. So it means I can grab him or an object he's holding. I'm going to choose to grab him and just kind of use him as a body shield right now. Okay. So uh, you lash out with surprising dexterity and almost put him into a headlock immediately and hold him against your front. And he starts squirming and says, Hey, hey, man, no, lay off, lay off. I'm not that kind of guy. Right now, you're whatever guy I want to say you are. All righty. Airbags, it is now your turn. Well, <clears throat> sort of was going to aim the gun at him, but now that Enzo's in the way, he instead decides to go for the more direct approach and just uh, sort of has the gun in his left hand and then takes his left hand and flicks it out to the side to extend the uh, the ripper claws. Okay. And then charges for purple to take a slash at his arm. Alrighty. Uh, if I can just find where melee weapons is. Uh, there melee attacks, uh, for you, this would Found be it. a dex plus brawl plus a 1d10. And, uh, since you oh, yeah. are... Uh, I found the macro. Oh, you found the macro? Good. And then if I read correctly, uh, this is based off of their evasion, I think. Let me double check. I think I actually need to roll twice. Hang on. Yes, so you can attack twice with one action. Which I think I will be doing. As you just slash slash m m mess them up without doing any real internal damage. So aim for the arms, essentially. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, uh, yeah, roll me another d10, because that is a uh, natural 10, which means it explodes. 
All right. Well, so the good right. news is, is that you do not implode on a uh, exploded one. But had you rolled the one initially, it would have imploded, which would have been bad. Mm-hmm. Um, so 25. I'm pretty sure they're not going to beat it, but I'm going to roll anyway. Uh, no, they would have had to explode and basically get two tens back to back. So, yes, you run up and successfully claw this individual. Uh, so that's the so first attack. So that's 2d6 for each of them. Oh, did the 16 miss, or...? Uh, oh, right. Uh, yeah, so... I did actually manage to roll those separately. Uh, yes, actually, both hit. Cool. So that's 2d6 each time, and it sort of chips a point off his armor for each individual one. You got it. Although I think the armor gets reducted after I've done the damage. Yes. All right, so five for the first one, and seven for the second one. So, are you aiming for any particular area? Uh, upper arms. Okay. So, with your ripper claws, you swipe across his arms and leave uh, bloody gashes uh, that are immediately beginning to well up with blood. And he begins cursing and saying, "What the fuck, man? Um, Anything else?" I, I, Airbags just sort of holds up the claws with the blood on them and grins. All right. So up next is going to be uh, Mr. Green Dot over here uh, next to uh, the party with Chono and Akari. And what he's going to opt to do is he's going to... uh, Chono, remind me, uh, what is it you're wearing either in terms of appearance or in terms of body armor? Um... Chono is wearing a light armored jacket. Okay. So probably business slacks. Um, his jacket probably looks like a... It could pass for a business attire, um, but it is armored on oh. the inside. Okay. And uh, I only have my heavy pistol because I did not say I was grabbing my SMG. Okay. Okay. Uh, In that case, uh, what the booster is going to do is he's going to bring up his own heavy pistol and fire at you. Uh, The DV here is a 15. So let's see what he rolls. Uh, Well, you get lucky. Uh, With a 13, what happens is is that the booster brings up his gun, fires off a shot, but apparently he didn't aim properly because the bullet just flies past you. But it is a very loud, noticeable gunshot. Uh... Up next, or well, I should say for the rest of his turn, for his movement, uh, he's going to take cover uh, sort of not quite behind the car, but sort of using the car uh, to his advantage. So maybe about there. All right. Not bad movement for a guy shot in the leg. Uh, blue was the one shot in the leg, uh, not green. Uh, oh, I thought I shot green. Oh, but if we want to recon that to blue, that's fine. Cool. Okay. I mean, if you yep. want, it, it either way, it one of them's matter. getting behind the car. So that's yep. Yeah, nope. Well, I'm cool. All right. So blue, the uh, the one you shot in the leg, uh, is going to uh, grit through the pain and uh, is going to take a shot at you, Akari. So again, the DV here is going to be a uh, a fifteen because he's not quite at that wound threshold where he'd start taking negatives. He's close, but not quite there. All right, so with a 16, that's all they need to hit, which means I get to roll 4d6 damage. So, Kari, you're going to take 14 damage to your body. Okay, and I have an 11 of armor, so that means 3 gets through and my armor gets reduced by 1, right? Correct, you've got it. Cool. I'm learning! (laughs) And then, uh, let's see, what is his movement? Uh, His movement, so he's not going to be able to get behind the shelves, but he will at least start hobbling over towards them. And Xavier, you're up. I'll stop and mute myself. Uh, I'm going to move and see if I can take a shot at Red with my shotgun. Okay, so go ahead and move, and then we'll move distance, or we'll check distances. Oh, how am I doing this? One, two, three, four, five. And you are within 15, so that is, or within 12, so your DC or your DV is a 15. All right. 
and I am going to spend two luck on this. Okay. Uh, and that and gives me a 15. I was going to say, it's a good thing you spent that luck because with the two additional, uh, your 13 becomes a 15. Go ahead and roll me some damage. And it's 5d6. Very nice. Uh, again, I'm assuming you were just aiming for the body, not the head? Shooting out the knees. Shooting out the knees. And shoot out the knees you do uh, in a reference to a game that Todd Ho Howard would love us to all buy a gajillion times. Uh, you shoot him in the knee. Uh, he exclaims that this is not what he wanted and that he's regretting his life choices. Uh, but you have otherwise hit him pretty damn well. In fact, in terms of mechanics... Uh, he is now considered to be uh, wounded, seriously wounded, which means he takes a minus two to all actions. All right, so that is Xavier. Uh, Chono, it is finally your turn. Um, I will. Um, I'll move to also be behind this rack. Okay. And I'm going to shoot. Um, I'll shoot blue with my heavy pistol. Okay. DV here is a 15. Well, that is indeed a 10, so go ahead and uh, roll another d10. See how high you can get. A 20. Uh, what I will say here is you do have the option, and I'm going to give this to you for free. Um, you could choose to shoot him uh, in the head for free if you so wished. And that yeah. being important, because uh, head, as far as head armor goes, uh, none of them are wearing helmets. Um, I will shoot him in the head. Okay. So whatever damage you roll is exactly what he takes. An 11. Well, that's a good thing, because uh, you leave him... Uh, like So the bullet impacts his skull... And, well, maybe not impact, but it does one of those things where it grazes past, like, his left temple and leaves just a gash and a bleeding, you know, blood begins spurting out, but a gash along that left side, the shaved side of his head. And uh, it immediately sort of knocks him for a loop, and uh, he spirals to the ground, like, trying to catch his feet. And what I'll say is that he is not going to be able to act on his next turn. Okay. Um, and, um, I'll just kind of blurt out, this isn't how we wanted it. Okay. Uh, up next is, uh, Yellow, but Enzo, you've got him in a grapple, which means I think the only thing he can do is try to break that grapple. Or with, surrender. Or surrender. surrender is always an option. Surrender is always an option. Um, roll me, uh, roll me a d10, Jester. Just a straight D10. Nine. Well, with a nine, uh, yellow is actually going to go limp and stop resisting and say, all right, look, man, I don't want to get shot. I, You apparently have a fetish for shooting out knees. Just don't hurt me, man. I'll say more of my turn. Okay. I don't think I can reply. All right. So uh, purple is next. And uh, what Purple is going to do is uh, airbags, since you are within melee range, uh, they are going to flick their own hands off to the side, and a monofilament wire comes from out of uh, one of their fingernails, and they more or less try to either garrote you or whip you with this uh, monofilament. Oh, I'm safe. Uh-huh. So, uh, this is going to be an opposed. Uh, this is going to be a melee weapons if you've got it as a skill. Otherwise, it's going to be your brawl. Uh, uh, melee weapons, evasion, or brawl? Um, I would say whichever is highest applies here. Uh, let's see. Uh, that would be melee weapon at 14. All right. Your number to beat is an 18. That's and a 22. Beat it, you nice. do. So you are able to nimbly dodge out of the way as this the monofilament just whips back and forth in the air, and there's just this very high-pitched whistle as it goes, but 
Doesn't touch you. Uh, up next is uh, the orange booster. And the orange booster is going to uh, look to his left, look to his right. And he's going to immediately drop his heavy pistol and dive beneath uh, this set of uh, shelves. Effectively removing himself from combat as uh, he decides that, you know, maybe, maybe this isn't, you know, his fight. And I think, unless I've miscounted, that is all of the purple foxes. Which means we come around to Curry-chan's roll. So Curry-chan is uh, going to step forward. Uh, not quite past Akari, but, you know, closer. And she's going to roll her own perception here. And she kind of looks around and says, I honestly couldn't tell you who's who. I, we're going to have to interrogate them. And that is her turn, which means top of the round, Akari, it is your turn. Okay. Um, Akari is going to go to the one that she shot in the knee. Um, head over. Uh, just ask Chono to just quickly watch her back. Um, can I do a persuade uh, check? Sure. What is it you're trying to get across with this persuade? Okay, uh, look, man, we ju we what just danced in here and took you boosters to school. If we wanted to, we could flatline the lot of you. We just want to know what the hell is going on. All right, go ahead and roll me your persuasion. An 11. Ooh. Uh, I would say that it's probably a combination of the fact that he's on his last leg, pun intended, uh, and the fact that he can read the writing on the wall, and he says, all right, look, just don't shoot me again. I, I, I want to be able to walk at the end of this. Right, spill. All right. So he begins spilling about literally anything that's on his mind, but nothing relevant to what you are interested in, but that is the end of your turn. Uh, so Enzo, uh, you, the booster that you've got in your grip has surrendered, uh, they are officially out of the turn order, so you could let them go, and I'm not going to, like, double-cross you or anything. Like, they are out of the combat. Um, so it is... What, what is it you'd like to do? I'm going to hold them up really tight, like, Batman-style, like, face-to-face, -face, lifting him off the ground and be like, which one of you little guys is Usari? All right. Um... Let's see. I think that just might be a persuasion. Uh, do you have interrogation, maybe? I do have interrogation. Let's do an interrogation. It's not my best, but... A 19. Well, uh, I will, of course, roll the opposed, but uh, I'm pretty sure you got this. Yeah, you got this. He says, ah, look, uh, it, it, that's him over there. And he points at blue. <laughs> Oh, I was right. I set yellow down gently. Mm -hmm. Give his shoulders a little dust of like, you know, brush him off, straighten his jacket and say, go home. And go home he does. Without any prompting, he just takes off running out of the warehouse. And that's me. All right. Airbags, what are you doing? Uh, well, does purple have a gun out at the moment? Uh, no, they appear to just have that monofilament wire, uh, which they have been trying to strike you with. Hmm. Gonna be a little tricky to disarm him from that. Uh, let me think. Uh, you know, let, let, let's see if I can at least do his arm and as so like convince him to stop it so I'm like you know I'm just gonna keep hitting until you put the whip down and I'm gonna go for the arm that has the whip on it okay <laughs> so uh yeah go ahead and roll your first attack and then if warranted we will then have your second attack a 20 all right survey says <laughs> wow they they are just not rolling great <laughs> Uh, with a natural one, um, you, of course, score a hit. So, again, you have the option here of doing damage, or I will give you something thematically, uh, depending as long as it's not, like, super outrageous. I'm liking the idea of thematically. Okay, what would you like to do? 
Well, how about like he goes for me with the whip and I take advantage of the fact that my left hand is just carbo glass claws and deliberately get the talons tangled up in the whip so that he's essentially grappled. Sure, I'll allow it. So yeah, you uh, so, so in uh, in a very I anime like move. Uh, in a very anime move, you uh, kind of swirl around your claws as the wire slips past, and you yank him forward uh, into your grip. All right. So uh, I think the only remaining booster, uh, besides purple at this point, that's still fighting is green. And what green is going to do is actually get into the car. And uh, for his turn, he turns on the car. But uh, we come around to Xavier. Uh, I'm going to move forward and try to take a shot at the car. Okay. One, two, three, five. And get the shotgun out again. Alrighty. And 15 is all you need. Go ahead and roll me some damage. A 16. So, uh, two things happen at once here. You step forward and you fire off your shotgun at the uh, tuned car. And it's not enough to actually, like, turn the car into a slunk of metal, a useless hunk of metal. But it is enough to shoot out both front tires, uh, which means he's probably not going anywhere. I can already hear the explicit... Ex the, the expletives, expletives. yep. Expletives. <laughs> Alrighty, is that your turn? Ah, uh, yep, that'll be it. Cool, Chono. I would say, for sake of argument, that you would have heard uh, Enzo's interrogation, and you know that Blue is who you're here for. Okay. Uh, I am going to... I don't know how it works in this system, but can I uh, called shot to knock him out? Like kick him or hit him in the head and knock him out? Uh, I would say that uh, there would be just basically a melee or a brawl involved. Uh, he could still resist, um, but if you will remember, uh, Akari did get him to surrender. So Okay. Okay. Then um, I will... Um, okay. Then I'll do this instead. Can I... Make a persuasion on the rest of them mm -hmm. to just either walk away or back down and let us have like five minutes with this guy. If you can give me your best impression from Mad Max of just walk away. <laughs> just a walk away. Um, I'll give you I'll give you a plus two on your persuasion. Go for it. All right, and then I'm gonna dump two points of luck into it as well. All righty. So plus four to that, so nineteen. Nineteen, and yeah, I would say that with uh, your best uh, road warrior impersonation for Mad Max, what is it? Is it Humongous? Is the actual guy's name? I forget. Um, yeah, Lord Humongous. Lord Humongous, and yeah. Uh, they, they set down their weapons, and uh, you are no longer in combat. All right. Um, then we will... Uh, yeah, I'll ask Kiri Chan to come in and um, have her identify this guy, even though he's already identified himself. Mm -hmm. um, and if he resists or anything, I'm just going to start, like, slapping him. Okay. Um, and I will uh, kind of motion to or tell Airbags and Enzo Xavier uh, if they all threw down their guns, scoop them all up. That's the price of doing business. Smart. I'm I'm just going to take a step back, and my optic, uh, my optic implant is recording this. It's not live streaming it, but it's recording it. It's recording it. All right. So Curry chan uh, goes over to the blue booster, uh, picks him up by the scruff of the neck, and says, All right, I'm going to ask you something very clear. Has Curry chan ever been a part of your gang? And Blue starts saying, Yes, she, and then Chono, you slap him. 
Uh, and he says, I no, no, never. She's never been a part of us. And and this is Kray Chan. And you're gonna stop saying these things that are obviously untrue, right? And Blue looks very nervously at Chono. Chono, do you want to do the intimidating hand? Um, I uh, yeah, yeah. Like I'll I'll like raise up like I'm gonna slap him again. Okay. He says, "All right, it, there. The rumors are false. I'm sorry for spreading them. Just just look. Don't kill me, man." And Curry Chan says, "Good." And then she slaps him hard enough to actually knock him unconscious. And Curry Chan just sort of looks around and says, Let's take their cars, too. Well, the working ones, anyways. Just hear Xavier, my bad. <laughs> uh, you, you, you get there, I'm gonna be a second. And Airbag starts untangling the nanofilament whip from his claws. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm going to take up while everyone's looking and drooling over their probably decent looking cars. I'm going to sort of steal away and just see what's inside the warehouse. Okay. So it's it's uh, mostly car parts, uh, you know, uh, tuner equipment. So things like uh, special gaskets, special rims, uh, special. There's even like nitrous oxide tanks in here. Um, it looks like the purple foxes were. Uh, pretty heavily into their cars. Literally. Um, I'm going to wave airbags over. Okay. Uh, yep. <clears throat> uh, so, airbags. Um, looks like we might be set on our own transportation home. Can I buy some transportation services from you? There's some full tanks of nitrous oxide in here. Looks like a decent arc welder. And is that a working plasma cutter? Do you know how expensive those things are on the secondary market? Man, I don't think I've ever actually seen one of these. And he's like, basically just going to do a sweep over and see, like, what have we got here? Mm -hmm. And yeah, With sure his enough. mechanic's eye. Um, yeah, the, the car that's... One of the cars that's working that... Is, is the car that's not painted with their colors working? Uh, you would have to, like, it's up on uh, a raised, I forget what it's actually called, but okay. you know how it's raised up? You would just yeah. have to lower it back down. Okay. Um, then I think we should take this one, because I'm not going to rep their colors around town. Um, yeah, no, you, you definitely want to do a bit of modification, like, file off the serial numbers of the tank if it hasn't already been done. Yeah, I'm sure that's something that we can handle later. Um... And I'll tell uh, uh, Usi. Um, oh, he's unconscious. That... He's unconscious. Oh, gotcha. Then I will tell the rest of them that are still conscious. Um, so, none of this needed to happen if you would have just talked to us. Being you didn't talk to us, that's why we have stuff like what happened now. So, here's that's what we're probably gonna... about when Airbags comes out of the back with a, a few tanks of nitrous oxide over his shoulders. So, here's what we're going to do now. Everything that we've, we're taking right now, price of doing business. That's what happens when you deal with a group that's bigger, meaner, and badder than you are. But having street level guys like you is kind of a good thing. So let's just say that in the future we may need, we may work together, and or I may drop you guys some work, and we'll just consider all this blown over because you guys made a very very bad mistake and messed with the wrong people. Tama? And uh, it's Red that replies with, you know, he's cradling the remains of his left knee at this point. He says, look, man, I, I don't care. You call us an ambulance now and I, I'll freaking lick your boots if you want. Why did you shoot me in the knee? Well, hey man, because you, I didn't. You're the guys that drew a gun on us. Because we didn't want to kill you. Again, none of this had to happen if you guys would have just talked. But, you know gotta be big gotta be mean so when we leave and we're on our way out we'll call an ambulance and you guys tell them that i don't know a rival uh boomer gang that you don't like did it put the cops on them sound good well me a persuasion please <laughs> um 
So since we are literally robbing them in front of their eyes. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, what's their TV situation like? Uh, <laughs> I uh, I'll I'll drop three points of luck on it. Okay. Ooh, now that could be a problem because that is a natural run. So what you're going to do now uh, is you're going to roll an additional d10 and subtract from that. Oh of dear. Course. So you said you were dumping how many lux luck points in there? Uh, three. So three. it'll be a total of a seven. So you have a seven. All right. Uh, I It's an opposed roll here, so there is the chance they could fail it. But uh, actually, that might be very close. How many luck points do you have left? Five. If you spend the remaining, you will beat them. Sure. Cool. Because again, I'm more, I'm definitely more about uh, the rule of cool here than uh, hard mechanics, especially uh, if you've got luck remaining and. Sure enough, they, uh, the ones that uh, haven't run away pissing their pants in fear, uh, they said, all right, yeah, yeah, that, that sounds fair, sure. Uh, what, what do we call you, boss? Um, boss sounds good. We'll just go with that. Uh, uh, cool. Do, are you going to call us, or do we have to call you? I'll, I'll call you if I need you. Uh, okay. Uh, have a nice evening. Oh, I know, I will. Um, and then we'll walk out, back, walking out backwards to make sure they're not going to do anything. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll split. Alrighty. So, to uh, wrap everything up, uh, you guys, of course, do acquire your selection of heavy pistols. You acquire a brand new vehicle, which I'm sure that airbags and uh, Akari are going to love fawning over. Uh, the other good news is that uh, so long as you provide uh, Curry-Chan with that recording from Akari, uh, she will disseminate it through her Netrunner friends, and basically what will happen is your reputation will go up by one. Uh, so note that somewhere on your sheet. And uh, Curry-Chan herself will give you uh, actual like hand-printed tickets uh, to her remaining two concerts, which are in Tokyo, just not in Shibuya. Uh, she also says that if you ever wish to call upon her as a reference, or hell, if you want a rocker boy on your team, she is more than happy to come and uh, pal around for a little bit. Sounds good. But yeah, that is where we end today's session. So, uh, as always, uh, I did want to solicit feedback again because we are new with the system and new with uh, cyberpunk in general what did people like what did they not like i liked it um i didn't actually find anything i disliked about that actually okay in the same boat i thought it was fun and nice and quick today mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah cool all right well in that case uh I think this is where I'm going to cut the stream. So I'm watching on Twitch, YouTube, etc., etc. Uh, this is where we're signing off. And you all have a ple ple pleasant rest of your day. <laughs> Bye, stream. Bye-bye.